The highlight is the, the first note that we play when we hit it on stage. It, uh, it just electrifies you. It's the total performance, just being out there and watching that response from the audience. Glamorama sort of spawned itself from a, a covers band that we were in. Um, we noticed that the covers scene was getting quite hard to get into. Um, so we looked around and there was posters everywhere for tribute acts. And some bright spark, can't remember who, came up with the idea of uh, a glam rock tribute band. When I was brought up in the 70s, that was my childhood, that was my passion. So we said, well, let's, let's go for that. Let's try and go for a 70s glam rock tribute show. And that's, that's basically where it started and we, we're here now. We drive around the country of southern England, five cars tailing each other around in a convoy to gigs, lifting and shifting stuff in and out. It's a huge team effort for it. And for me, that's a big part, to see it together with a bunch of guys that are all pulling in the same direction and all having a lot of fun at the same time as well. Band members are made up of historic bands that I've been in, really, um, over the years. Um, the most recent band was a, a band called Barking Like a Dog, and my brother Roy, who's a frontman now, was in that, and Nigel, our bass player, was with us with that band. Well, they were looking for a bass player some years ago, and there's very few around, and I turned up, and I think it was the only one, so you know, it was me or nobody. Going back in time, I had a punk band called Best Left Dead, um, very spinal tap, and the drummer that we had there was Lee, who we seconded back into this band, and we used to tour with a band called Inferion, and the guitarist with Inferion was Ads, who is the other guitarist in our band, our lead guitar here. So we, we've got this sort of history that runs throughout decades, really, working together. And that, again, that really helps form a band that's got a, a good, solid backbone. These aren't costumes, we wear this every day. I go to work in this. Pretty much all of this stuff is custom made to our own requirements. This is, a, this is a, an outfit inspired by a hero of mine, Brian Eno.
The band is really, it, it's, it's got a chemistry that makes it all work. I mean, the, the guys all gel so well together on and off stage. So that is a critical part of the band. That really is good. But it's, it's all faithful to the 70s glam. It's 70 to 75, all the classic glam bands. And we're just trying to recreate that, recreate our youth, to be honest with you. But the audiences absolutely love it. It's, it's, yeah, it's popular music. It's fun. Well, we're old geezers. And um, we grew up through the glam rock period and loved the music. And I can still sort of remember sitting watching Top of the Pops early 70s and marvelling at the, the music and, uh, and wanting to be part of it. And here I am. That's why the only reason I got into the music business was sex, drugs and rock and roll. All I've got is the rock and roll so far. It comes with being 50 plus, the sex and the drugs take their toll at my age. Classic hard core of the band is um, going to be Slade, Sweet, T-Rex, David Bowie, but we put in some Susie Quattro, some Shawadi Wadi, some Mud, and some sort of left of centre stuff. We even throw in a bit of Quo with a bit of artistic licence, and um, we do Time Warp as well, which is a, a, a real crowd pleaser at the end of the end of a night. You get folk up dancing, and you get its energy that comes from down here on the you know, on the dance floor to you up there, and it makes you play ten times better. There'll be people that aren't necessarily dancing, they're sitting down and they're singing every word of the song. And at the end of the night, they'll come up to you and just tell you how they've, they've enjoyed that. The, the more extrovert members of the band get out and mingle with the, uh, the folks on the dance floor from time to time as well. Well, when we set it up, we strive to make it very, very authentic. So we've got the, the period outfits, we've, we've bought costumes from all over the world. We've got the equipment, the guitars, everything that we're using, like stepping back in history and seeing that, that 70s band on stage. And that hopefully comes across to the audience who most of them would have been there anyway. It doesn't get any better than this. It's huge energy, it's a great show. <laughs> we play bloody good music, we get people up and dancing, we interact um, and we get asked back. You know, there's, there's the evidence that we're doing it right. Mm -hmm.